Well, good morning. So everybody decided that it was their turn to talk today. So pastor has less time today, but that's all right. If you have your seeds, would you hold them up? If you don't have seeds, then somebody... Oh, there you go. Okay. So I don't know if you ever saw Pee Wee's Playhouse. And maybe you didn't. That's probably good if you didn't. But he always had a word from the day, a word for the day. And when they said it, they went crazy. Uh, we're going to do something like that. And this was actually an idea from my mom on the way home last night. She said, you know what you should do? When you say the word seed, you should have them hold up the seeds. So if you hear the word seed, yeah, you got the idea. So, uh, you know, last year, uh, about this time of year, I spread some wild seed. And very good. And as I did it, I see, I'm not even going to notice when I do it until you do that to me. But that's okay. The ADD people are like, this is the best ever. <laughs> best sermon ever, seed. When is he going to say seed? I'm waiting for seed. What's... Okay. Anyway, so I spread some seed. And uh, the birds came and grabbed some of it and redistributed it. But after the season came, you know, if we were doing, if we were doing red light, green light, you would all be out. But after the season came, I know it's close, wasn't it? So after the season came, uh, it was neat because after they were planted and began to grow, those seeds uh, began to grow beautiful plants. I had blue ones and red ones and yellow ones and all kind of stuff. It was amazing. But I will tell you that most of the time, I have a brown thumb. I can kill plants. Uh, so like when I go to Home Depot or Lowe's, I say, what do you have that an idiot can't kill? And they go, well, if you take care of this one, no, 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 no. If you feed this one, no, 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 no. I need like cactus type plants. And then they go, yeah, here's some plumbago and lantana and here's some more weeds. There are weeds other places, but if you put them in your yard, people think you know how to grow stuff. So that's what I do. Uh, here's the verse for today. Matthew 13 is where we're going today. And we're going to talk about this idea of... Um, of growing. And as we look at this idea of rooted, we're looking at Psalms 1 where he talks about us being rooted in God's word. Then he told them many things in parables. By the way, Jesus is telling seven parables if you want to read the rest of them, saying, a farmer went out to sow his seed. As he was scattering the seed, very good, some fell along the path and the birds came and ate it. Some fell on rocky places where it did not have much soil. It sprang up quickly because the soil was shallow. But when the sun came up, there were cakes on the griddle. Life's not nothing but a funny, funny... Sorry, that's what happens when I read the Bible. It's just songs come into mind. John Denver, experimental planes, all kind of things come into my mind. You'll get that later. But when the sun came up... The plants were scorched and they withered. Why? Because they had no root. Other seed fell among the thorns, which grew up and choked the plant. Still other seed fell on good soil where it produced a crop a hundred, sixty, or thirty times what was sown. And then Jesus says, whoever has ears, let him hear. And that's kind of Charles Stanley. Listen. Listen. I don't know if you watch Charles Stanley every 12th word. Listen. Notice this. Listen. Anyway. So that was Jesus. He's like... If you got ears, put them on. So let me ask you this. Has your life become meaningless where you just don't have emotion? Are you right now going through kind of a winter season maybe in life? Maybe for you, worries. You wake up in the morning and you're worried. Or maybe you're just going through life and all of a sudden a worry just hits you. Uh, you're driving and all of a sudden you're worried about something. Maybe that's your life right now. I want you to know that you can overcome these things and have abundant life if, if you'll take care of the soil of your heart so that God's word can be planted deeply. So my two questions are today are this. What kind of soil describes your heart? And then how can you let God's word sink more deeply into your heart? We're going to look at that today. And here we go. Three conditions that that limit growth. And we're going to talk about each of them. We're going to first talk about the path. This is from my driveway. This is part, I didn't yank it out of my driveway with a crowbar. Don't worry. But this is, this is a leftover. There's cement on it. Uh, you know, do you put seed on this? Or for some of us, very good. For some of us, we have a rock heart or there's weeds. Here's what it says. Jesus, by the way, I love the disciples. Because the disciples in public... 
they would say to Jesus, yeah, yeah, we get it. He's doing a great job. Wow. Isn't that a good word he just had? And then they would get in private and go, what? What in the world did that mean? And so I love it. Jesus explains his parables to the disciples later. And so the first one is hard hearts won't understand. Hard hearts won't understand. Listen then to what the parable of the sower means. When anyone hears the message about the kingdom and does not understand it, the evil one comes and snatches away what was sown in their heart. This is the seed, very good, sown along the path. That's the impenetrable heart. I don't know if you've ever tried to tell somebody something that you knew was true and they just looked at you and went, nope. I know a guy who works at the Space Center who told me the earth is flat. He works at the Space Center and told me the earth is flat. There's no convincing somebody like that. If I put him in a balloon and took him to the edge of the earth and took him where he could see the earth thing, he would say, see, that proves my point. When somebody has a hard heart, it doesn't matter what they hear. And too often in our society, we think if I say it louder, if I say it more often, maybe they just need convincing proofs. No, no. If somebody has a hard heart to anything, especially God's word, you, you can't convince them. And, but here's the deal. We look at other people and we go, well, how dumb can you be? By the way, somebody in here might be a flat earther and be like, well, yeah. Okay. So, so you know, we think, how dumb can you be? But the truth is, do we really believe God's word when we read it? When God says, fear not, do we believe that? When he says, I'm always with you, do we believe it? Or do we have a hard heart? We're like, Ugh. because what happens when your heart is hard, you, you quit having emotions. You go through life and you start to wonder why the Christian life no longer has joy. Why you no longer have peace. The other night I was in Orlando and Google said, don't go this way. And I said, Google, you don't know what you're talking about. And I got on I-4. And most of my stories end with me saying, and I found out I was wrong. But I just want to point out that Google was wrong and I was right. And I got home easily because it thought I was going to drive in the right lane and I didn't. And I made it home at the same time I should have. And I said, see, Google, I'm right. And so you know what's going to happen next time Google tries to reroute me, right? I now have a hard heart. Google, you don't know what you're talking Oh, no. If you're not careful, you can get that way with God's word if you don't allow it to soak into your heart deeply. Number two, so not only hard hearts, troubled hearts have shallow roots like, like these rocks. You could plant a plant in here. And isn't it amazing that weeds will grow in rocks, but real plants won't? Your worries will grow in here, your, your frustrations, boy, you can grow those all day long. But if your roots aren't deep, listen to what it says here. The seed falling on the rocky ground refers to someone who hears the word at once and receives it with joy. But since they have no root, they last only a short time. When trouble or persecution comes because of the word, they quickly fall away. Sometimes you don't know how good your beliefs are until you're challenged. Many of you know I lost a good friend this week suddenly. Just, just talked to her a couple weeks ago and she's gone. When those moments happen, are your roots deep? When you go through those times, why is this happening? When you go to the doctor and they tell you something and you go, oh no, I didn't think about that. When you find out suddenly something in your life changes, whether it's a job situation or something with a family member or a friend, and you're challenged, do you instantly go to fear? Or are you able to walk in faith because your roots are deep? Do you have a superficial heart? And see, some people, you don't really know where you stand or whether or not you really trust God until you go through a time that you have to trust him. You know, it's like the maple tree. I've got a couple of maple trees in my yard. They look dead right now. But in a few months and maybe in a few weeks, I'm going to know whether those leaves start coming out. And during the hard times, during the winter times, you know what's supposed to be happening with my maple trees? The roots are growing deeper. I want you to know if you're going through a hard time, I know it feels so dry right now. And maybe it feels cold. And maybe it just feels like, am I going to walk through this? 
If you will trust God and spend time in his word and spend time in worship, as David talked about this morning, if you will do those things, your roots will grow deeply so that when trial comes and struggle comes, you'll not only survive it, you'll grow through it. Other people will see your example. Number three, worried hearts are fruitless. You know, I would love to tell you that it took me a long time to find weeds in my yard. I literally took one step in my yard and went like this and filled this jar. I could have filled thousands of jars from my yard, but it's green. And if you keep it cut, nobody knows. Except when I went out barefoot. I like to walk around my yard barefoot. I'm one of those weirdos. I, I like being barefoot as much as I can. My wife is the opposite. She would wear shoes everywhere she could. And so I go walk into the yard and she has to say, well, I told you to wear shoes because I stepped on what looked like a, one of these. Just, you know, no big deal. But I found out it had little thistles on top of it. And it woke me right up to its presence. Some of you don't realize there's weeds in your life until all of a sudden your worries are choking you. You're stressed out. Your blood pressure's high. You're getting gray hair. Your doctor says you've got to learn to relax and you haven't taken a deep breath in years. Matthew 13, 22 says this. The seed falling among the thorn refers to someone who hears the word. But listen, listen. Some of this describes you. But the worries of this life and the deceitfulness of wealth choke the word, making it unfruitful. So what happens? They hear God's word. But then fear, frustration, anger. And then it says, and the deceitfulness of wealth. Why? Because most of what we worry about is taking care of ourselves. We feel like if we have enough money, then we're fine. Not recognizing that money doesn't provide happiness either. We think, well, yeah, but a little more. And the truth is, in one of the wealthiest nations in the world, we're deceived by wealth. Thinking that if I just had this, then... I'd be okay. I wouldn't have to worry. And yet, the news, the media, all the time, as Rodney spoke about, by, Rodney, by the way, masterful job during your time today. That was just perfect, it, right into the message. So, you know, like Rodney talked about earlier, what is the world doing? Seeds of fear. Haha, <laughs> very good. Deceitfulness. Looking for ways to make you afraid. So before you know it, all of a sudden, all you can think about is what you're afraid of. All they're doing is selling commercials. You need to realize this. That I don't care what news you listen to. They're not your friend. Quit thinking that your news company believes what you believe. If you could talk to the owner of your news company, they'd be like, no, I, don't, I just do it because it makes a lot of money. I could care less. I, by the way, I have a friend who works for the news media pretty, pretty up high and tells me all kinds of stories about the conversations that go on. Don't be fooled into thinking that they're your friend. They are sowing fear. And if you're not careful, that fear will choke out anything that God's trying to do in your life. Don't be preoccupied with what's going on. When you're driving and all of a sudden you go, oh no, what if? Or in the middle of the night, like me the other night, <gasps> I was trying to dream. What in the world? How is that showing up there? Why? Because you're carrying it into all parts of your life. If that's happening to you, it means you've allowed weeds to get in there. It's time to pull the weeds. For some of you, maybe it means you quit letting the media plant the weeds in your life. Maybe you quit reading as much online as you're reading. Maybe you quit looking at as much as you're looking. I'm not saying don't be, please be aware of what's going on in the world around you. You don't have to, but you need to be in the world. But Jesus said, not of the world. And recognize that he's got everything in his hands, even if it doesn't feel like it. That's why people and Christians in the Ukraine right now are singing together this morning in bunkers and in subways and singing songs about Christ because they understand the last part, how to plant seeds for growth. Very good. Matthew 13, 23. But the seed falling on good soil refers to someone who hears the word and understands it. This is the one who produces a crop yielding 160 or 30 times what it was sown. What's Jesus talking about this crop? He's talking about Galatians 5, 22 and 23. The fruit of the Spirit is love. Are you full of love? Joy. Boy, if you're walking in fear, it's hard to walk in joy, isn't it? Love, joy, 
peace. Are you walking in peace? Patience. <laughs> I've driven with some of you. Some of you saw me go around you to turn right at this light. I'm sorry. Love, joy, peace, patience, kindness. Are you kind to other people? See, when you're frustrated all the time, it's easy to ignore other people. Why? Because all you're thinking about is what you're worried about. When you can't look at other people when you're walking in fear because your fear monitor's going off. What could hurt me? But kindness overcomes that when you're kind to other people, even in the middle of tough times. Gentleness. It's hard to be gentle when you're frustrated and irritated, isn't it? Love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, gentleness, faithfulness, self-control. God, help me to spend time in your word. Let your word be rooted in me. The first thing we need to do is evaluate our heart condition. That's what Jesus is talking about here. Take time to evaluate your heart condition. When's the last time you really looked at, am I full of fear? Am I, do I read the Bible or even allow? I mean, is the pastor talking and all I'm thinking about is bacon? And CC's waffles, delicious, right? Or am I allowing God's word to sink deeply in my heart? Number two, confess your need for the Holy Spirit to help you understand. See, hard hearts won't understand, but it says this in John 14, 26. But the advocate, the Holy Spirit, who the Father will send in my name, will teach you all things and remind you of everything I've said to you. I know what that's like. My mom lives with me. And she will say, honey, I need you to do this. And I'll forget 12 seconds later. And she'll say, honey, can you do this? And I'm like, mom, you've only had to tell me 14 times. I almost can remember. Right? And some of you are married. I had a guy last night say, you know, your wife sometimes does this. And this guy's face was like, oh, no. I knew that right before we got here, his wife had to remind him of something that he'd forgotten. He was, oh, no. The Holy Spirit's there to remind you. So when your heart gets out of balance, you have to say, hey, Lord, Holy Spirit, would you speak to me today? I would encourage you on the way into church to say, Holy Spirit, speak to me today. When you open your Bible, whether it's in the morning, afternoon, or night, spend time in God's Word. But before you spend time in His Word, say, Holy Spirit, awaken my heart to what you want to teach me today. Because I don't know about you, I've read my Bible, and literally before I put it away, I forgot what I read. That shouldn't shock anyone who knows me here, right? But the Holy Spirit's there to remind us. Number three, confess your lack of trust. Listen, when you find that you're worried, you have to go back and rely on Christ. God, I can't fix this. One day, regardless of what happens, 75 years from now, most of us will not be here. And it may happen suddenly and it may not. You may have on my tombstone, I told you I was sick. Right? Or his last words were, what does this button do? Right? It can really be anything. We need to realize life is short. And so what do we need to do? God, I trust you regardless of what happens next. Jesus said this in John 16, 33. I've told you these things. So in me, you may have, what's the next word? Peace. Do you have peace today? In this world, I wish it said you could possibly have trouble. Anybody here ever have trouble? Yeah, right? That's the dumbest question the pastor's ever asked. And that's a pretty high standard. In this world, you will have trouble, but take heart. Back to the heart. I've overcome the world. So you can, you can soften your heart to God. Why? Because he's overcome the world. He's going to help you through whatever trouble comes. Well, I didn't know this trouble was coming. Well, God didn't go, oh, it did? God's not surprised. Hang on to him. In those troubled times, surrender your heart to him. God, I don't get it. I don't understand it, but I trust you. Number four, confess your worries. Recognize your blessings. Matthew 6, 28. Why do you worry about clothes? See how the flowers of the field grow? They do not labor or spin. What is Jesus doing? He's saying you can focus on your worries or you can focus on your blessings. Look around and see what I've done. See how magnificent the flowers are as you walk around. And you cannot worry and praise at the same time. One of the reasons that we start the service with music is not because we need something to do. And it's not so that people can go, oh, I heard some music today. 
the Star Trek song. That was phenomenal, right? But it's so we can praise Him. Why? Because praise turns you away from worry. It reminds you of who's in charge. And that's number five. Focus on Christ with an awareness of the enemy. You have an enemy that's come to steal, kill, and destroy. And he does not have to destroy you. He just has to distract you. So that you pay no attention to your family. So you pay no attention to your coworkers. So you pay no attention to what really matters around you. And you focus on things you can do nothing about. And you're so focused. I'm so worried about this thing that has nothing to do with me. That's way over there. And I can't do a thing about. Boy, I wish I could fix that. And yet we're not talking to our family in the car. And we're not calling our friend and saying, how are you doing? We're not writing a note to that person that says, I just want you to know you're loved. We're not checking on that person we haven't seen in a long time because we haven't thought about them. Why? Because we're thinking about somebody that we can't do anything about instead of thinking about the people who are near us who God wants us to care for. You know, when Jesus was tired from his journey, he sat at the well and the Bible says he paid attention to the lady who was there. Do you know, sometimes the only thing we need to do is pay attention Attention to what God is bringing right around us for us to be a blessing and to care for those. But you can't do that if you haven't allowed his word to sink deeply into your heart. Has your life become meaningless? Are you going through a winter season? Are you being overcome by the fears of the world? You can have abundant life today. And so much so, as Jesus said, it multiplies and overflows out of you to other people. But you have to spend time in his word and allow the seed of his word to be planted deeply in your heart. If you're here today and you've never given your life to Jesus Christ, the first part of softening the soil is to surrender your life to him. So that the Holy Spirit can speak to you. So if you're here today and you've never given your life to Jesus, maybe you know about him. Maybe you've heard some good stories. But you've never said, Jesus, I know you died on a cross and rose again because I'm a sinner. I'm messed up and I need you. And today I choose to surrender my life to you, my sins to you. And I choose to follow you the rest of my life. That's what it means to be a Christian, not just to know about Jesus, but to surrender our lives to him. The Bible says when we understand that he died and rose again for our sins, that he takes our sin and gives us his righteousness. A big exchange takes place. If you're here today and you're a Christian, but the truth is, as I talked about these different things in your heart, you looked and you realized, I'm struggling with weeds. Or I've become hard-hearted. Or boy, I do well when things are good, but I have a hard time when it's a struggle. Ask God to soften your heart. Spend time in his word. Maybe turn off those things that are causing you to worry. Maybe take a fast from television and the news for a day. And ask God to allow his word to sink deeply into you to change you. Let's close in prayer today. Father, thank you for your word, your power, your strength. Lord, I thank you for the music that was given today, Lord, that reminds us of how we can worship you regardless of what's going on. Lord, I thank you for the words of wisdom and the words of challenge today that remind us that your word can be planted deeply in our hearts. Father, I pray that we would recognize the value and the power of your word in us. And Lord, that we would allow it through memorization, through spending time with you, through prayer, Father, as we allow your words to sink deeply into our hearts, that it would grow up and have an abundance of fruit. Lord, that our neighbors, that our friends, that our children, that our grandchildren, that our nephews and nieces would see how your word impacts our lives and that would impact them. Thank you, Lord, for doing that. It's only through your spirit that we can be made new every day. Lord, bless each one that's here. For those who are going through a winter season right now, I want to pray that your word right now would give them hope that would spring up in their hearts and lives. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you for being here.